Hi guys, welcome to my affordable watch collection. My name is Aviv, and if you don't mind, I want to start this video on a personal note. On August 2nd of this year, 2023, World War II veteran Vincent Vince Speranza passed away at the age of 98. Private First Class Vince Speranza was a paratrooper with the American 101st Division during World War II. He fought in the Battle of the Bulge and earned himself the nickname Machine Gunner at Bastogne. Now, I did not know Vince. More than that, before reviewing his namesake watch made by Presidus, an American micro brand whose watch we are going to take a look at today, I didn't even know of him and his legacy. It's funny how through reviewing a watch that was made to honor a man, with his insight put into its actual design, I somehow feel connected to him and his story. That is why what Presidus are doing is so important. Like I said a few times before, the watches they make are not made to celebrate or glorify war, they are made to bring the heroes who had to fight it into the spotlight, keeping their stories and heritage alive even after they are not. I am honored to play even a small part in that effort. So today we are taking a look at another Presidus field watch that is paying tribute to the men who fought for their country. The A2 Dieslaird edition. Dean Dieslaird, the ace of two oceans, was a US Navy pilot who flew both the F4F Wildcat and the F6F Hellcat above the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. This is the only US Navy ace pilot to have victories credited to his name in both oceans. This watch is a part of a two watch limited edition collection, with the second one being a black dial version of the same watch, honoring Bud Anderson. Both watches are offered with either a Swiss made Soprod P024 movement for $600 US dollars, or a Japanese NH35 for $350. Before he passed away on August 2022, at 101 years of age, Dieslerd had actively participated in the design and conception of the A2 Dieslerd edition. We have a lot to cover today, so I'm not going to stall on the packaging. This is what you can expect to get with your Dieslerd watch. Now for the measurements. This is a compact watch, coming in at 36 mm of case width, though it is pretty thick at 14.3 mm, including the protruding crystal. It has an odd lug width of 16 mm, lug tip to lug tip is 43.5 mm, and it weighs 67 grams. Water resistance is 5 atmospheres of underwater pressure. The Dieslerd Edition dial color was inspired by the original colorway of the F4F Wildcat. It has a matte textured finish and a nice gradient effect as the dial goes from baby blue around its edge to light gray on its center. I really like this effect. It looked like the dial was once blue and it aged after years of use and exposure to the elements. The use of Fotina Loom on the dial really ties this look together. It seems to be heavily applied on the 1 to 12 Arabic numerals marking the hours as they are quite significantly raised from the dial. We also have a white minute track with some more warm colored loom around the numerals and loom 10 minutes indicators around the very edge of the dial. Reminiscent of the A11 style dials of World War II. The dial is sterile, with no branding or wording on it whatsoever. The watch is equipped with syringe style hour and minute hands filled with loom, and an arrowhead seconds hand that features no loom. All three hands have a frosted finish. You saw the thick application of the loom, right? This had me hoping that the loom is going to be awesome. But unfortunately, the luminescent effect emitted by the old radium superluminova compound used on the dial and hands is not very good. The loom markers on and around the minute track fade out almost immediately, and the hands and indices manage to stick around for around 30 minutes before going dark. Though the listing on Presidus website says this watch features a flat sapphire crystal, this is most definitely a single domed sapphire crystal. You can tell by the way it magnifies the dial and distorts it when you move the watch around, and by the way the light seems to reflect off of it twice. And well, by the fact that it is domed and not flat at all. Moving the watch around also reveals the blue tinted anti-reflective coating 
that was applied to its underside. The case is made of stainless steel and it is brushed on all surfaces. Worth noting are the small steps on each one of the lugs. The side profile reveals just how chunky this case is, with much of the chunkiness coming from a very tall case back. The dramatic down curving of the lug somewhat compensates for that, but we'll see how the watch wears in a moment or two. The lugs are also drilled, which is a detail I always like to see. The oversized crown at the 3 o'clock position screws down into place, it is brushed and gnarled, and very easy to grip and operate. You guys know I appreciate good looking case backs, and especially ones that bear meaning. Here it's clear that a lot of thought was put into making the case back special. While the rest of the watch is completely sterile, the case back tells a story. Assembled in the USA with imported parts, and produced with parts of an original Grunman F4F Wildcat, are engraved around the edge of the backplate. The second statement refers to that little numbered disc at the top of the bead blasted center portion. This is an actual piece of that World War II fighter aircraft that is integrated into the case back. Below that we find Dizzler's nickname, the Ace of Two Oceans, and an illustration of his F4F plane, with his lucky number 3 on its side. This is signature, and limited edition and his full name are found at the bottom. What a beautiful way to commemorate the man and his legacy. The watch Pace Hitters sent me for review is powered by a Seiko NH35. You know the deal, 24 joules, 21,600 BPH, hacking, hand winding, 41 hours of power reserve, minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day on the accuracy front, durable, reliable and affordable. And yes, it also means that there's a ghost date position, as the movement features a date complication that doesn't get utilized on this watch. This watch, like a couple other Presidus watches I've reviewed, comes on a very nice Horwin leather strap. This one is skinny and long, tapering from 16 to 13 mm. With the distressed texture and stitch lines it has on top, it looks like it was actually lifted from a vintage watch. It is soft and supple right out of the box, which means that no awkward breaking in period is needed for it to be comfortable to wear. It is equipped with quick release spring bars and a vintage style stainless steel buckle that I absolutely love. Let's put it on my 7 inch wrist and see how it wears. I have owned and tried on countless 36mm watches, but this one is an oddity. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but while being a pretty simple watch, it wears like nothing else. Or for the very least, it looks like nothing else I've put on my wrist. I can't really put my finger on it. Maybe it's the narrow lug opening and the narrow strap. Maybe it's this unique color of the dial that really pops. Or maybe it's because it's the only 36mm watch I ever wore that is over 14mm thick. It's probably a combination of all of the above. It's very comfortable thanks to the super comfortable strap and the angle of the lugs, and I think it really looks awesome. It actually feels like I'm wearing a vintage watch on my wrist, only not as fragile. It does sit a bit too tall on top of my wrist, and I wish they'd find a way to make it a bit slimmer. Out of the two watches in the D's and Bud collection, this is the least legible one. It is by no means impossible to read, but the combination of a light colored dial and a single domed sapphire means it might take you a second or two to find those hands and tell the time if you have a direct light over your watch. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of the A2D's Laird Limited Edition. Cons first. First thing is the legibility. Single domed sapphire crystals are not my favorite, simply because they are generally very reflective. Even with the air coating, you still get a ton of distracting reflections bouncing off the crystal. The second thing has to be the overall thickness of the watch. It is just very thick for a relatively small watch. Besides that, it would be more reassuring to have an increased water resistance of 100 meters. And like you've seen, the loom could definitely use an upgrade. And the last thing is the odd lug width of 16 millimeters. While I do think it looks great and suits the vintage aesthetics of the watch, sourcing for a good 16mm replacement strap is not going to be easy. 
not impossible, just not as easy as it would be if the lug width was 20 or even 18 millimeters. With that said, the strap is good enough that you wouldn't want to replace it, and probably wouldn't have to, at least for a few years. This brings us to the pro side. So yeah, the strap is very good and super high quality. It is comfortable and a great visual match to the watch in my opinion. The dial is gorgeous in its color and its simplicity, and I love that it was inspired by the actual color of the plane this Laird used to fly. The stainless steel case seems to be well made and nicely finished, the sapphire crystal is going to stay scratch free for years, and the case back is a masterpiece. Even without the story that is attached to this watch, this is a very good watch. Allow me to be corny for a second here. This isn't just a watch that tells the time. It is a collectible item that tells a story. This to me is a clear case of the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. Once again, Presidus have created a timepiece that immortalizes the life and achievements of someone who has done and sacrificed beyond imagination, fighting against the forces of evil. I would like to take this opportunity and thank Presidus for letting me be a part of this journey. Let me know what you guys think by dropping a comment below. If you like what you see and want to check the Bud and Diz collection out for yourselves, you'll find the link in the description of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my affordable watch collection, and hit the notification bell for more affordable watches related content. You can also follow me on Instagram and get to know me and my collection a little bit better, get all the news about the channel, and connect with me on a more personal level. Here is a quick link to my review of the A11 Vince Speranza edition and to another Presidus A11 field watch. I want to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.